Hi, it's James Wesley and... Wait, no, we have to begin with the thing that Jack oh made gosh. us. Literally, the, Jack is gonna get so mad if we don't do it. He's Here gonna get so mad. Here's the beginning Jack made us. <laughs> Hi. Oh, now, okay. See, now it's like much more professional. Oh, that's professional. that's that's professional. Okay. Okay. So, James, you're going to meeting in five minutes. Let's well, just do uh, our, no, I'm gonna we're gonna, I'm gonna explain everything in a second. I want to make sure this is charged. So, if any of you oh. notice, it may look a little bit different. Why? You may ask. Not only are we using my mom's HD little camera, um, which is not cool. On, not cool at my age. Go on. Uh, <laughs> but we've changed. Look, look at the fancy stuff that we think that we can do now. So it can literally be at the piano. Wait, you can tell us how bad my posture is. Hold on. You well, you have to be prepared for anything, Seth, just like our guests. Still got it. That's right. Okay. Anywho. So that's our new setup. We're going to see how long this lasts. Those yeah. of you who have seen the show from the beginning know that we've been in like four, four or five different set positions. It's just like our show. living room. So we just have a rickety backy piano light. Anyway, yeah. we're we, we are our set Maybe. designer all in one. What is Stars in the House? Stars in the House is a daily, twice daily online, because you're watching us online, talk show with music and to lift spirits and educate people with the help of our wonderful friend, Dr. John LaPook, the chief medical correspondent for CBS News and Stars in the House. And as we seem to have to explain every day, Actors Fund is not just for actors. It is definitely not for rich actors on the coast. Yeah, there's like a it, rumor that it's for basically anybody in the arts that's struggling, which by the way is 98% of the people. Right. And it's for things like paying people's rent, paying people's medical bills, paying people's childcare. And as B.B. Newworth said a couple of weeks ago, the Actors Fund, the reason why it was called the Actors Fund 138 years ago is because back then there was no TV, there was no records, there were no film. It was only stage and everyone was called an actor. No matter what you did. So, so it's for stage managers, people have this. Anyway, the money, their they're, Actors Fund is doling out in like emergency help. How much money per day? $250,000 a day. So this is just a small smattering That's right. of the and money have, that they and need. I, and I want, to do, I want to do some shout outs uh, to people who donated at the end of the last show. By the way, I literally forget so quickly. Oh, this was Thursday Variety. We had so many amazing people. Oh, well, yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, so we want to say a thank you and a shout out to Jim from New York who donated $25. There we go. Let's do that a little bit. We've got to see it playing. Um, Rob from New York, $100. Sarah from New Jersey, $50. Stephen from Michigan, $50. Seth, Lily from Hawaii. A hundred dollars. I don't know if we've had a Hawaiian before. And Carrie from Florida, fifty dollars for a grand total of over one hundred and seventy thousand dollars in the last three weeks and change. Just from the show and all the artists who volunteer to be on it. Yeah, thank um, you so much. So a couple everybody. of things. Yes, Queen. So um, I want to show that picture of what how our day was yesterday before we get to we the, do the we tell the story, then we show the reveal. Okay, we'll get it ready for everyone. Stuff. So yesterday, yes. So we we, we had, live in the country right now, right? And we yeah. had we had a we had a, we had, a dogs. we had a repairman come. He was very very safe in where he came. He kept like literally 10, 15 feet distance. Did all Gloves, that plastic over the shoes. And when he left, he had closed the gate. But our gate is a little bit tricky. And and he and it didn't. And I should have gone down there and I should have locked it. But the point is, that Manny was outside eating grass. So I'm making breakfast. I'm like, boy, Manny's eating grass for such a long time. What a good girl. And then we looked outside. And literally two of the four dogs were gone. Which dogs? Well, my mom has two of the dogs. Her dogs were good. They stayed. Our two dogs, dogs. Mandy and Bagel, long gone. Mandy, we could hear, because as you can hear her whining right now, she was easy to find because of her barking, just two houses down. The other one, Bagel, Bagel the, the, the beagle, beagle with the nose, we could not find him anywhere. I was running everywhere. I was in high heels. No, that's not true. But I was running everywhere. It was so difficult. We went two different directions. Finally, you found him. Well, because he was, I heard the typical beagle howl. And so I went and he was a good boy and he stayed. But I took a picture. This was yesterday. We just forgot to show In the it. woods. Bagel in the woods. Yeah. And he was happy. Yeah, look how happy he is. Yeah. He there like, he is. We have two giant. Oh, wait a minute. Look how, see how far our house, our, well, you can't see, but if you look in the distance there, yeah. there's the house. That's how far he had gotten. We literally have two giant wolves and bears yeah, in it. And he's just like, giggle, giggle. It was I like, can't. it was terrifying. And um, and that's why I had to tell Margie, our other executive producer, why I was two minutes late for our 11 o'clock meeting yesterday. Okay, I'm about to leave. Because we have a big place you've got to work on tomorrow. Well, but also we have, and we just haven't shared it. We've 
we've, as we all know, the announcement from the Broadway League was that Broadway will be closed until at least June 7th. And our, our vow was that with, with help of our friends and new friends, that we would continue to do the show twice a day until Broadway reopens. And in order to make that happen, we're not gonna make the announcement now, but we've got not one, but two sponsors who are going to help us do that. And we will make that announcement shortly, but I've gotta leave to go do some producing stuff. And tomorrow, I believe the story will break about who our reunions will be next oh, yeah, week. Yeah, we've got some big TV Three reunions. TV reunions that are, we're really excited about. And That's one, next week. And one in particular, I'll just give a clue. If anyone who knows Seth Rudetsky really well and how he was influenced comedy-wise will know that that will be one of the shows yeah. that will be coming up. Not next Bugs week. Bunny, but- That's true, either. not, we will and not, not have- And not the Burnett show. That's, She's, okay. All right, well, but one of really, the, okay. Well, I one said of one. All right, fine. Okay, way, so on that note, go ahead, Seth. Someone got, someone busted. What? Bagel, you little mushugan, I'm happy. <laughs> Quit giving you dance Isn't that the truth? Oh yeah. my gosh. All right, so I'm gonna make sure you're- I'm not charging, but I'm an 88, so it's fine. You have, a, you have a wonderful show. I'm gonna just still make sure. Okay, you go to me, Mandy, please stop crying. I may have to take Mandy. All right, guys, so we're doing a big reunion tonight. It is um, Spring Awakening, the 2007, the old school cast people, not the original with Gavin Creel. That was 2003. Name dropping. This is like the actual one on Broadway. Please welcome so many people from the show. Okay, so hold on. Here we go. So I'm going to start with the youngest cast member ever who's wearing cool cans. Hi, Remy. Hey. Hey, girl. And then we all know him as BCJ. No, we really don't. But it's Brian. Hi, Brian. People know me as BCJ. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> now what? Okay, Lauren Pritchard, known as LP. No, she's not. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Guys, what's going on? Phoebe, who's going to take a stroll. Hi, Phoebe. Hi, how did you know I was the oldest? That's so rude. <laughs> Actually, I'm saving the oldest for Mr. Skylar Aston. Yeah. Guys, we're back. Okay, so what's happening right now? We're on StreamYard.com, and you can't have two, first of all, you can only have six people on screen. But you can't have too many people waiting or else the whole system shuts down. So these are my first six. So those of you having a panic attack saying, like, where is Marit? I'm not going to look at the comments. They're coming. It's one big show. So everybody hey. said, well, i got to start with these clowns first. First of all, Phoebe, what are you drinking? I'm just a teenager. What's Tito's happening? Tito's and soda with a, a lime wedge. We're in quarantine. Oh, I forgot to warn everybody. Also, if anyone talks at the same time, all the sound goes out. So basically, while, every, while someone else is talking, you have to nod politely in complete silence and then be like, and then speak. By the way, why is my lighting gray? You guys look amazing. Is it because I'm 50 years older than you? Not cool. Okay, so Ram, you were the youngest in the show. I always thought Christopher Rodriguez was. How old were you when you got into Spring Awakening? Did you say me? Yes, Ram. Ah, uh, okay, yes. I was, um, I was 16 going on 17 when we did the uh, workshop. <laughs> Well, you and were then, going at 17 when you got cast in the show, were your parents like, you are not doing that sex show. It's not happening. Um, yeah, actually they were pretty supportive. I was kind of the one where when I got the, when I got the sides, cause it's the beating, it was the beating scene. And when I got the sides, I went, uh, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. So what finally made you go like, I can't do this, a paycheck? I mean, what did it? Uh, honestly, reading the, so at the time, um, Taya was, Marta and Taya were different characters. So I was reading as Taya, who was saying the Marta monologue before Dark and Noel. And I just, I don't know, I felt like it was really important to honor and uh, share the stories of sexual violence. Bravo on the deep yeah. thoughts. I appreciate it. Oh. Peeps. <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you do any of the early readings or did you come on just for the Broadway? Uh, no, I, I got cast in the Off-Broadway, and then, yeah, I let Lance. When you were doing it Off-Broadway, did you ever think it was going to go to Broadway, or were you like, whatever, I'll make $90 a week for the next six months? and then <laughs> Well, actually, no, I, of course I hope, but I de the first paycheck I got, this was my first like New York theater job. The first paycheck I got, I actually burst out laughing, and I went out to the company manager, and I said, I can't do Off-Broadway. Did you believe how small it was? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, but he, he he had no response to that, so uh, yeah, I had to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, by the way, P.S. This is why the actress fund is so needed because even people working, they're not making money now. Nobody's working, so nobody has money. 
I mean, you're really good being a hit show, and it's like people have day jobs while they're in hit shows. Okay, Lauren, by the way, I love your mirror in back of you. It makes the room look much larger. It's a nice Martha Stewart time. Oh, uh, thank when, you. When did you join the show? I joined the show. I did uh, I did a workshop, and then I did it off Friday, and I'm through with it. By the way, what did I say was going to be happening? Okay, if I see a comment like this again, I explain clearly the two sections. Don't make me block you, Emporio. Thank you. Sorry, Laura. Emporio, oh. I promise that Jonathan Groff will make an appearance. It's all good, as we say. He's with us all the time. He's with us all the time. He's even right here. He's, not, he's right over here. Even when he's not, even when you can't see him, he's still here with us. Don't worry, oh. Emporio. Oh. Groff sauce. <laughs> All right, BCJ, what are you drinking? Because again, well, first of all, I can't tell if you're frozen or contemplating. Frozen, moving on. He's frozen. <laughs> I think he's frozen. Right. I'm drinking lemonade, really crystal uh, white. So? All right, Skylar, um, first of all, happy um, Pesach. I don't know. Thank you so much, Cox I'm drinking hey, some you, Jameson and ginger. Brian, you just unfroze. You were frozen for the last two minutes, <laughs> by the way, like that. And now you're back. I think the Wi-Fi, yeah, okay, now you're moving. Man, I was just it's all good. Back, baby. Okay, so hold on, I'm moving over to the Jew. Skylar. Jameson Brian. and Ginger. <laughs> Crystal Light. <laughs> Skylar, Jew the last name. Yes. I know, Skylar, you're drinking Manischewitz. The last name is so Goyesha, and the first name is so Goyesha. Where is the Judaism? Lipstein, my real last name. And what's your first name, Moisha? Skylar Aston Lipstein. <laughs> How did I get Seth Rudetsky and you got Skylar Aston? Well, maybe if you were like Seth Austin or like something like. You know, I guess you can marry you? I'm married. I'm married. Not cool. Okay, Sky, when did you join the show? I joined the show at the uh, Lincoln Center reading. Uh, uh, it was one of those when they did the jazz at Lincoln Center concerts, and it was actually the last time that this adaptation had the masked man in it, which for those of you who know the original Spring Awakening play, there's like this character named the masked man. And Roger Bart had done it with Gavin Creel, uh, and uh, Michael McElroy did it once, and but when I did it, Michael Cerveris played it, um, and it was kind of amazing. However, just like, it was just kind of a pointless role in the musical because he just echoed everything that like, everyone said. Just after Purple Summer, he would be like, Purple Summer. You know, and you're like, oh, I need to reiterate that. And like also, in, and then there were none, like he was the one that did it with Moritz. And so we all kind of became the masked man in the spirit of the show once that rolled. But I, what I just think is interesting for people watching is like, when you're in high school and you do a show, the show is like done. When you're lucky enough to be part of an original cast, you get to see like things develop. And that's what's so cool. Like you guys got to see the show go from like what it was into like winning the Epping Tony. Okay, so yes. favorite memories. Uh, BCJ, favorite memory of Spring Awakening. Is it a possible his wig falling off, bra snapping, falling off the stage? Go. Uh, when John Groff forgot all the words to Left Behind. <laughs> that's For sure. That's For sure. sure. Wait, you left he left behind his own words? Yeah. Oh, he, just, he just kept repeating yeah, the chorus. Oh, yeah. God. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I, I yeah. cry every he time. He just kept singing. He just kept singing. All <laughs> things. All yeah. things. <laughs> and we had to and we had to keep walking by him because like we would walk by him and look at him and he dropped the flower in the grave. And so we were all and then we would all just like try not to make eye contact with each other because we were all just like <laughs> Yeah. And of course, it's a funeral procession, so it's not like <laughs> laughter should be happening. But. <laughs> he was like whispered in his ear. I was the yeah. last one. <laughs> and he was, he was like, because John never makes mistakes, but when he does, they're huge because he's, <laughs> he's Superman. So he's Superman. And, and love you, know, John. <laughs> the best, the best, the most consistent performer. But when he would mess up, it would be like, "Oh, there's a glitch in the matrix," for lack of a better point. Yeah, amazing analysis. Okay, Lauren, what was? Were you there the night of the Tony Awards? Did you get to perform in the Tonys? Of course. And how amazing was that? 
it was amazing. I remember looking over to Lily because we started, it was a medley that we did, right? So we started with Mama Who Bore Me. And I remember us walking out and I stood next to Lily Cooper and, um, and the words that came out of my mouth were, holy shit, right before we started singing. And uh, yeah, it was insane. It was amazing to look out into Radio City and to see all of those people there you know, but also everything that had happened to us in the course of about a year and a half was completely bonkers. So it was sort of like we we were this little show that could, you know, and, and we believed in ourselves, but you never really know what's actually going to happen. So to be there under those circumstances with everything that happened, it was pretty, it was pretty unbelievable. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. Okay. We're going <laughs> to, all right, we're going to go do this now. Ren? <laughs> I, I knew when, because John, so they did the best supporting actor really early in the broadcast. And I knew when, or I think we all knew that when John Gallagher Jr. won, we were like, oh my God, this night is going to be insane. And it was. <laughs> and it was. <laughs> More practical thing. Did a chair ever break on stage? There was a lot of standing and slamming chairs. No. Anybody? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Yeah, Gerard no, broke like 20 chairs. Oh, yeah. Gerard broke like 20 chairs. That's like all Gerard Canonico. Yeah. When? He was angry. The chair of rock. Yeah, he was it was his uh he'd stomp on the chair all the time. Yeah. Yeah, they went through like 10 chairs. Our covers were on stage performers as well. And we had this thing where our the 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 um the audience would sit on stage and then there would be a role of the chair of rock. And so Krista and Gerard and Robbie Hager and all these wonderful Jen Damiano, they all yeah. were in the chair of rock. And so Gerard literally would break his own chair on, on yeah. a weekly basis. But he'd have to sit in the broken chair for the rest of the show. Because they didn't have a, a like, spare. Yeah. It's like his punishment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so off Broadway, John Gallagher Jr. would come through a chair at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was crazy because one night wasn't somebody like leaning on the chair? Yeah, he, like, somebody was fully yeah. leaning. Yeah. yeah, it's like when he was coming out of the grave. He's like, oh, yeah. 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 Like, he would like wiggle, he would wiggle his body chair. through the chair and somebody was leaning on the chair and didn't realize what was going on. And he was trying to like bust it up and come out of the yeah. chair. And it wound up being I, probably way creepier than it meant to be because it was like, what is going on? What is going no, on? And he's like, like, crawling through the chair. Busting out of Moritz is great right now. <laughs> it's yeah, he looked like he looked like the girl from the ring coming out of the right. chair. It was he very did. he really that did. Or the final queen in Carrie. Okay, yes. I guess yeah. the final question is would that audience constantly sitting on stage, any bizarre audience interaction that you guys had? Uh-oh. Yes? Wow, it's uh, a lot of people. We had a, a lot of drunk people. <laughs> a lot of what? Drunk people. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of drunk people, but I mean, what about the audience? I, I, got a room say, I think for the most part, people were pretty much, I don't know if it was shame, <laughs> but they were pretty behaved, I feel like, for the most part. I don't for the most part. I know okay. Yeah, I just think for the most part on that one, I mean, because our fans were very dedicated and they would they would know where we would sit throughout the show because we would sit amongst them. So a lot of times they would try to get a rise out of us because they knew us and we developed relationships. But when we were on stage, it was serious, you know, so we were not going to be mm. like, hey, you, know, you know, and uh, I, I definitely got uh, Brian. Did we not get room keys thrown at us during Touch Me? Like when we were uh. in the <laughs> That what? is quite possible. I don't, yeah. I, I'm, Wait, what? Uh, I think so. It was like a, it, I thought it was a mistake, but it was like a hotel room key and it didn't be passed uh, out. Oh they God. were hammered. <laughs> I know that every time, every time my mom sat on stage, she would poke me. Hi, mom. I know she's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> we. I was going to say, I can't remember whether it was Remy or Lily, but there, I remember very specifically there was, so, after Left Behind, we would all, those of us that weren't Jonathan Groff, would sit down on the steps in the front of the stage. We were kind of, we were really, we were as close as possible to the audience there. And there was this one time where there was this dude who was like fully dressed in leather with like leather gloves on and everything. He was sitting in one of those front row seats. And I can't remember whether it was you, Remy, or whether it was Lily, but he legitimately reached out to touch hands 
with one of with yeah. one of you. And maybe it wasn't you, Remy. Maybe it was Lily. But it a hundred percent happened, and it was very, very odd. And it was like yeah. I don't know. And he was like some older gentleman, fully dressed in leather, with like leather driving gloves on, and he reached <laughs> out to touch, like grab the hand of one of the cast members sitting in front. And I think it was. Must have been Lily, if you don't remember it, Remy. Yeah, I don't but it was remember. odd. It was like we were sitting there, and everyone's like, because we can see you're. We're past the point. We're sitting in the front, so there's no light glare. We can really right. see everyone right. and everything, right? And there's this leather dude reaching out to touch one of the young girls in the cast. I was like, no, that's not how you do that. That's not. That's not how you do. That's not good. That's not, that's called, not great. That's called Match.com. Okay, so. <laughs> BCJ, um, one of the people up here would like you to do your Michael Cerberus impression, maybe. I am Michael Cerberus. That's just kind of how I did it. Well, That's then, how we well, did it from Todd. Sweeney Todd. It was from Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd right before it, yeah, Sweeney Todd was open. I'm to Michael Cerberus. <laughs> okay, you guys, you're amazing. We need, have, we need to have a double reunion. So I'm going to bring you all back because there are too many other stories that we haven't done yet. I'm first going to bring up the doctor. Scott, we need to bring you back because you're actually going to be singing. So, Scott, you're going to come back. You clowns, I got to get rid of us. The platform is going to cut. Remy, you got to stop drinking. <laughs> it's the first step. Of the of the <laughs> Second step. All right, we'll talk about I'll send you an AA meeting. All right, okay, thank great. you guys. Amazing hanging out with you. You're all going to be back. Bye, Rams. Bye, Lola. Ah. Bye, Phoebes. Scott, I'll bring you back to sing after this. Uh, ah. BCJ. Hey, bye, BCJ. Hey, listen, everybody listening, I forgot to say this. Right now, we actually have a matching grant. So you can, someone just said, how do you donate? You go to starsinthehouse.com. And if, if we get up to $1,000, Catherine Hicks, who owns a Focus Design Studio, she's going to match $1,000. So if we can get some donations up to at least $1,000 tonight. Oh, thank you, Jen. Hold that microphone. Go. Thanks, honey. Hold on. I got to no, no one can look the waist down because- We already saw when you're walking oh. down the stairs. <laughs> Okay, you got okay. that, and you said about the grant, right? Yeah, can you guys hear me? I can. Dr. Lapu, can you hear me? I'm gonna assume that you can. Okay, so anyway, we have a matching grant, so please get the donations up to $1,000, and then we'll get a matching grant from Catherine Hicks. She owns a Focus Design Studio. You go to, um, hi, Mandy, startsinthehouse.com. Anyway, listen, we gotta get some medical advice for you kids, and then we're gonna bring on the rest of the cast. This is the Chief Medical Correspondent from CBS News, Dr. John Lapook. Hey! Hi, I dressed up. You look great. I was um, doing something else. What? <laughs> I was thinking you looked too nice. Did you see Spring Awakening when I was on Broadway? Well, you know, there's a funny story about Spring Awakening now that you asked. I, I, we went with Daniel, my son, who was, yes. I don't know, very, very young, so young that at a certain point he got so embarrassed that we had to go. <laughs> oh, that's the kind of show you cannot see with your parents. Was it perhaps from the nudity of Jonathan Groff? What? <laughs> oh, inappropriate. <laughs> or it was, it was us. It was some uh, poignant, po poignant part, um, uh, but um, well, I have two things I want to talk about. One is uh, it's starting to seem that well, some good news. There are some fewer admissions, slightly fewer admissions to hospitals. Still, they're filled. I mean, the intensive care unit where I am at NYU Langone is is filled. You know, yes, and and it's amazing what people are doing over there. I mean, everybody from doctors and nurses, the people sweeping the floor, the people doing the linens, um, the ward clerks, the respiratory therapists, the physical therapists. Um, a lot of bravery. It's really, it's, it's very, um, it's very, it's very impressive. But, you know, for, for people out there, there's something that's happening right now that worries me, which is, I think people, what's happening to the heart attacks? What hap what's happening to the urinary tract infections that right. can become serious? What's happening to the appendicitis? And I think that people are, are afraid to come into hospitals. And I'd like to say to people, um, if you're having symptoms, don't assume that the answer is going to be stay home, you know, you, but that, that you can't go to a hospital. You can go to a hospital safely. If people are waiting for you, if there's the right precautions taken, I know it's scary to go. But if you're having chest pain, if you're having shortness of breath, if you're wheezing, if you're having a urinary tract infection, and suddenly you have a kidney, you can get a kidney, yeah, and people can yeah. die of infections. So um, I don't want people to be at home afraid to come in and, and get help. Well, you know, Laura Bell Bundy had to go to the hospital because of the COVID-19, but she did say it was extremely safe, and she said it, it actually wasn't crowded where she was. So it's sort of two different pieces of news. Is some hospitals are not so crazy crowded, but also you 
shouldn't die from something else because you're too scared to go. They're, they have a lot of protections at hospitals right now. They're being very, very careful. Yeah, no, they are. I mean, of course, there's nothing 100%, but they're being very, very careful. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we think we know how it spreads. There are precautions you can take. And there's this whole, you know, medicine thing that for thousands of years, we keep getting, we're, you know, it's a very humbling profession in medicine. You know, there's ups and downs, believe me. But there are some things we can do. Uh, so we don't want people to just stay at home with this horrible strep throat and end up getting a complication. I would love you to bring back some of the kids because this is the age group. I want to ask them some questions. All right. They're not quite kids anymore, but we're going to pretend. That well, how old are they? What's the age group? I would say they're probably around 30 at this point, but they were, kids. they were, you know, all right. So I'll bring in here. Scott, Skylar. Matter with kids? Oh, Skylar's gone. Skylar, you play, uh, you play a kid, but yeah. yeah. Well, but the people actually in the, I know whether it's Gen X or millennials or, you know, people who are 20 to 35. Are you 20 to 35? Hi. Yes, yeah, so we're 20 to 35. 20 to 35? All right. So am I. Okay. We'll Go so on. Here's what I'm interested in. What has this been like for you? Because, of course, we all saw the video of the guy at spring break who was saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not stopping doing my spring break because I've been preparing this for weeks. And, you know, we, we were all idiots when we were 18 years old, so I'm not criticizing him, and he actually apologized for it. But it, among your friends, among your peers, has there been a shift in your appreciation of what's it been like? I know it's been what it's been like for my peers. What, what's it been like for you guys and your peers? Um, I just personally been trying to encourage people to stay home. I mean, it's we're, we're in a place where if you're thinking ahead, and you understand the data and what's going on, that it, it still hasn't quite peaked yet. And it, it, we have to take action before the peak hits in order to eventually make it go downward. So I, I've just been encouraging people to stay safe, stay home. I would I would love to be in New York right now with my mom and dad. I, I, I wish so badly, but what I would have to enter and exit through to get there would just sure. put them at risk. And so even seeing and hugging my own mother on her birthday, we sacrificed this year because it's keeping people alive. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough here. Um, I'm interested, in, and Jonathan, I'm interested. I'm another Jonathan. I'm interested in um, I, as I'm as I'm talking with you, and I'm hearing how mature you're sounding. I'm realizing there's a reason for that because it slapped you in the face. March 12th, Broadway closed, so there was no hiding it from you. And you guys have been professionals from a very young age, so I think you've probably had to grow up, and you're probably emotionally more intelligent than a lot of people your same age. Um, but Jonathan, what's it been like oh. for you? <laughs> Except for Jonathan, completely. We were doing this at 18, that's why. We were doing that, we were working at yeah, 18. So, um, you, you know, have you, have you noticed your, I mean, I'm just interested whether there's been a shift, you know, you, how, how can I ask you how old you are? I'm 35. Okay. So that means you were 16 when 9-11 when happened? Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder whether um, – how that prepared you for this. Because, you know, I went through I'm, – I'm, uh, I'm a lot older than you are. Uh, but I, I grew up in the 60s. And um, the worst thing that happened was John Kennedy getting assassinated uh, when, when I was like 10 years old. That was terrible. I remember the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was really scary. But then, and then there were the assassinations. So, you know, I felt like as I was growing up, the world was really in turmoil. Um, and then there was a long period where, which actually, it, it, there, was, there weren't these cataclysms. There was there were always terrible events happening in the world. But I wonder for you, you know, has, do you have a sense of the world that it's just not a safe place? That you know, you have things like 9/11 happening, or, or are you able to recalibrate? It's funny. I feel like for some people in the in the younger generation, some people are taking it seriously. Some people are not. And then I but I do think it's I don't think it's a generational specific problem in that a lot of my friends, parents aren't taking it seriously as well. Yeah. So having, you know, to force my parents actually are taking it seriously because they had close friends of theirs that passed away uh, a couple oh, of weeks ago, that. people that they knew. And I think that regardless of the generation, I think that probably the most affecting thing is personal connection. I think that's the case with any issue. So I think 
probably young people that have experienced it on a personal level are feeling it in a more real way. And, and the same thing with probably every generation. From, from my own experience today, I just spoke with my mom through the glass of my front door because we're afraid of, of, of passing it back and forth to each other. So in, our, in, in my personal case, I'm taking it incredibly seriously. I came to Pennsylvania from New York City with my friend Katie. We quarantined for 14 days before going to the grocery store. We had our groceries delivered before then. Uh, and my parents are taking it very seriously. We're staying six feet apart. We've all got masks and gloves. Um, and I mean, it's plug, this is a plug, but my mom was speaking through the glass today because she got me all this stuff to donate to uh, anyone who's gonna like auction off. I got all the Spring Awakening swag. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So whoever wants it, I'm gonna sign it all and send, spray it down with alcohol and send it to whoever wants it. <laughs> I have a CD, a script, a picture of me and Leah, a poster, That's and great. this bear. Oh, bro, bear. bear! No, this is not a time for despair. No, oh, this, oh, bear. Said, this bear. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Okay, no. Jonathan, we're gonna talk about the auction. Dr. Pook, you're hilarious. Okay, <laughs> we're bringing you back at the end. Is Ash gonna be here tonight? No, Ash is elsewhere. Our little doggy. All right, we're gonna bring you back to say goodbye. You're always great. Someone just wrote, Dr. LaPook is the only person I trust in the media. It's sweeping, but I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. LaPook. You're going to come back. We love you. Um, I'm going to bring on a little uh, Gideon Glick action. Hi, kids. Hi, guys. Hey, you cuties. Yeah. And I just want you to see that Jonathan dressed up by wearing a baseball cap and a beautiful T-shirt. <laughs> it's a sweater. Oh, look at your hair. I'd like to counteract nice. that with the stunningness of Lily Cooper. Now, this is called during my show. Thank you, Lily Cooper. There was. Yeah. Am I here? Yes. Can you hear this me? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. All the above. Can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, totally. Yeah. Okay. And What's finally, up, and finally, we have somebody. I don't know if because he's been quarantined for four months that he's grown his beard, or this is just his new look. Mr. John Gallagher, quarantine. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? Uh, I'd like to say that this is just because of the quarantine, but it's it's been it's been going since the last job I had, which was November. So this has just been my unemployment look that's now really been a little exacerbated and accelerated by the quarantine. Um, okay, before I forget, Jonathan Groff, I know you're so respectful, but get your cell phone. I just sent you a batch of donations, please, for you to read. Um, I just texted you. So this is just some of the, if you guys, if you donate, you can get your donation read by the sultry, soothing voice of Jonathan Graff and that beautiful lace front that he has on. Look how right yeah, here. Really? This lace well, what? Also, I have a sigh on my eye, just to point it out. No, I, it works. Um, thank you. Wait, sh should I read these aloud? Yes, please. We've got Anne from Connecticut, $50. Hey now. <laughs> Daniel from New Jersey, $75. Elizabeth from Pennsylvania, that's where I'm at, $25. <laughs> Stephanie from Connecticut, $50. David from Louisiana, $50. Kate from New Jersey, $25. Rebecca from New York, $50. Joanna from Virginia, $15. Anita from California, $50. And Nancy from Florida, $50. That's incredible. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, if we get up at least to 1,000, we're going to get that double. Okay, so wait, before before we get into the real chitter chatter, we got to have some music. That's why we have a lot of you here. So it is Pesach, Skylar. I assume you're going to sing a song uh, from Yisrael? Yes, I'm going to be doing the Geshbucha from the <laughs> musical Yeba Yeba. No, this is... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. No, this is a new ditty that I learned for this special occasion. Um... This is my favorite song to do and perform. Um, and I love it so much. And it's called Touch Me. I'm Can I say something real quick before yes, you Lily, do you know, He Oh, thank you. I have a ring light in front of me. It's for my self tapes. <laughs> he, uh, it's the first time I put on makeup in like two weeks. So I'm really glad that you said it. You look <laughs> gorgeous. You look great. <laughs> Skylar does really love to sing the song. In fact, I've received several renditions of him singing along to his own cast recording of himself. 
So he, he wasn't uh, lying I when he said that. Uh, I took a fifth on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna discuss okay. that post post song. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna take I'm gonna leave the screen. I'll leave you to sing to your friends. So guys, start making out. <laughs> oh, this is so actually amazing. It's kind of weird that the first three solos are right. Okay. Also, do you guys remember when both Johns cracked up during this? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do. I won't, I won't sing the whole thing like it, but it actually sounded like we're like. <laughs> 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 because they got the giggles. Why? Anyway. Do you remember the scene <laughs> beforehand? Yeah, what's happening? I, okay. Where I go. Sorry, sorry. Focus. When I go there, no more memory anymore. I'll be drifting on some ship. The wind that whispers of the distance. Where I go, when I go there, no more listening anymore. Only hymns upon your lips, a mystic wisdom rising with them to show. Oh, touch me.
Whoa. Go. Huge Fuck that. Fuck that. You broke the dog. Um, Skylar, that yeah. was great. Thank you, you have the most appropriate, nope. hold on, most exciting comment. Let me just try to find it. It was very exciting. <laughs> By the way, Catherine Gallagher's here. Hey. Gallagher. Hey, Catherine. <laughs> But I just got so excited. Oh, I wish I could find it. Basically, Scully, what was complimented about that song was your vibrato. Hey, and we talked <laughs> about that. <laughs> what do you have to say about that? That gives us crap about not using vibrato during uh, during Spring Awakening yeah. and how we were forbidden from actually using vibrato. So I told him I would throw some 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 flutter in there for him. <laughs> Thank you, Skylar. Say hi to Meryl, please. Can you say hi to Meryl Lipstein, my mother? Mrs. Lipstein, hi, Meryl. I know I, I was gonna make a surprise appearance yesterday on Zoom for the whole, uh, the whole, the whole but I just couldn't time it out. So Meryl, thank you. Sen is very, very talented. You should be oh. stepping nachis, as we say. Yeah, she definitely is. Where was I? Hey, Gideon, I haven't even spoken to you at all. What's thank up? You. Were you doing Little Shop when this, when, when our probably shut down or had it transitioned yet? I was. We have not. We did not transition. Uh, we were like we were halfway through my my last week. Oh man! So were you just like the robot? You, what do you mean? Meaning you were back, <laughs> Jonathan? Don't make that face. Meaning you were like I'm about to go on stage. Oh wait, it's canceled. My arm. No. So I think we had the sense that on Wednesday when the when that article came out that the ushers um, yeah. tested positive, we kind of had this sense that. Um, my husband's also a doctor, so I was kind of being the crazy one in the dressing room, being like, guys, we're going to shut down. We're going to shut down. And so we kind of knew that our that performance was the last one. And I'll say it was it was wild. It kind of felt like we were – actually, Graf, you were there the night before, right? Mm hmm God, time is – Wait, yeah. Bizarre, you, were the, you were in the audience annoyingly lip-syncing every single line and lyric? <laughs> He was the biggest cheerer in that audience. How weird was it, Jonathan, to watch the show that you had just done? It was um, incredible. Gideon was incredible. And it was so great. I, I was so uh, joyful. I laughed and cried so hard. It was great. Okay. I can attest that they were both amazing because I saw both of them. Lils, you're so supportive. Thanks, Tom Gallagher. So yeah. It's the beard and the lighting. Are you in a bunker or is this a hostage situation? Yes, both. <laughs> both. You look great. Both. Wait, is it dark? Is it, it? I was like, is it dark where I am? It's a little dark. The dark I know well. I'm going to turn my light. Thank you, John. Um, oh, that's the end of what that's all. Come on now. How's that? <laughs> I'm going to go back to, uh, oh. to happier times. Look how nice and bright. And youthful we are. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. See, it's a beard, night. but it's nicely trimmed. What was? <laughs> by the way, what was that? Was that was that leading men of Broadway? What was that? Uh, that was no, but uh, we Broadway stands up for freedom. I think that was the. Yes. Yeah. Say no more. Yeah, I that was fun for the NYCLU. Yes, exactly. So, Lily Cooper, what's your favorite memory of doing Spring Awakening besides Jonathan forgetting all the lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I'd say my favorite memory, uh, one of the really good ones for me was I was in high school at the time and all of the girls got to perform at the Drama Desk Awards and we performed at my high school. So I went to LaGuardia, the performing arts high school in New York City. And so one of the most surreal moments for me was performing it, my Broadway show at my high school, which were like the two lives that I was concurrently living. And I got to bring everybody back, backstage to my locker and to my classrooms. And um, a lot of cool people were there and we were all babies and it was really surreal. And I'll never forget that one. That was pretty cool. What about JG Jr.? What's your fave memory? Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have any. Uh, it's, it's, it honestly is such a blur to me. I, I was today kind of racking my brain for like some great tidbits and some stories that I could tell, but the whole thing, honestly, at this point in my life, I don't know if it speaks to some kind of uh, issue, um, uh, with my brain, but it, it's all kind of one giant swirl of kind of wild fun and weird mood swings and energy. 
Um, but I, the thing I really just think of the most is the camaraderie was being part of something that, you know, we were so young and when we got involved in it, it was here you are, you're gonna go do an off-Broadway show at a 200 seat theater. And then the next year and a half, you know, everybody's life changed and we were suddenly the toast of the town on Broadway. It was so overwhelming and so much to process. Um, but I just remember that feeling of going out on stage and feeling like, a, you know, like I, I'm not a sports guy, I never played sports, it's why I ended up in the theater. But I'm, I remember- I'm a- I'm a big sports fan. <laughs> I remember being like, this must be like what it feels like to go out and you know, your teammates have your back. You know, like every time we walked out on stage, I was like, this must be what sports is like. <laughs> well, those moments before places were actually some of the most fondest moments. We would, so great. You know, since our show had, you know, was dark at times, obviously, we, we were crazy right before we would go on. We would be so jovial and silly and constant jokes and then get super serious as a heart attack the second the red light went off. And one of my fondest memories of you Gallagher was actually all the time since Moritz's track kind of like is a little bit you know goes away in and out in the second act I just love you lingering with that crazy hair and just being like what's up I was eating Sour Patch Kids like outside my dressing room oh yeah I ate a lot of junk food once yeah uh, once my character committed suicide I was like now it's junk food time <laughs> wait spoiler alert what? Nah, come on if you're watching this hey by the way Seth can you see this oh wait. my god that's us that's Yes, that was that was um leading man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you wait? Are you a stalker? Why do you have that on your phone? <laughs> the background in my phone. It's the background of my phone. All no, right. I just googled it. I'm a little creeped out. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, so oh it's dramatic. So not true. Okay, wait. We have to go back, Jonathan and John Gallagher. Of course, you've got to tell the classic story that I love to talk about. But now I have photographic proof. Please, let's talk about the night before your final performance when you forced me to commit a crime and lie to your stage doorman. So Jonathan and Gallagher, please, well, I don't know, by the way, why is this my position? Why am I so demure? But let's talk about it. Well, I'll start it. I went to go see the show. I want to see the cast before they left. I went up to go visit Groff and Lee Michelle. I was hanging out in the dressing room. Little did I know you were going to suck me into your sick plan. So, so in honor of John's last performance, Leah and John and I decided that we were gonna sleep overnight in the theater, but it was illegal to be in the theater after they had shut out the lights and the security guard had left. So, so Leah and I had like fabric over my dressing room counter where Leah, I can't believe we did this, where Leah and John and I were gonna hide And so when the security guard came around to check all the rooms, we would be hidden. He would think we were gone, but we hadn't quite thought through how we were going to get the keys to our dressing room back to the stage doorman without him knowing we hadn't left the theater. Yeah. I think he knew. Oh, I think he did did not. No. So I was forced with my husband, James, we had to go down to the stage doorman. We're like, Here's here's the keys to the dressing room. And he's like, where's Jonathan and Leah? I'm like, they left. And he's like, <laughs> they did? I'm like, you didn't see them leave. I'm like, by the way, so panicked. I don't, I mean, I don't know why, because it's so not a crime. <laughs> I was like sweating, like, you didn't, you didn't see them leave. And he's like, oh, that's so weird. So I hand the keys. Then, of course, I open the door, and it's all the Jonathan Grapp and Lee Michelle fans, who's, of course, face falls when they see the horrible older Jew. I'm like, I know. You're not interested. I get it. So I had to leave those fans. And by the way, just so you know, this is literally what it looked like. This is those two clowns hiding. And this is me. <laughs> oh my God. And where is John in that picture, I wonder? Where yeah, was I? You weren't there yet. So then what, what was it like to sleep in a rat infested, roach ridden theater overnight? We can never tell. <laughs> what did you guys do? Spooky. Wait a minute. They what didn't even tell us. I don't know. I don't know what happened. What did we do? Where did you actually where did you sleep? On the stage in one of those stupid chairs? They had nice dressing rooms. <laughs> not, not from what I saw. Um fell, I think I fell asleep on the floor <laughs> of somebody's dressing room. <laughs> I've never seen less information given to your accomplice, Rude. I'm, I'm looking to Jonathan to see how much I should really divulge. Well, you know? so far, nothing. You've divulged <laughs> nothing. So maybe something would help. 
Should we devolve? I mean, we devolve whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I think some. I think I think I seem to remember Leah bringing like a bottle of scotch in. I think there was some like we drank some scotch and. I think we had a great plan to watch like some scary movies, but we didn't really get around to it because we were kind of running around the theater doing as much exploring as we could. I remember it being very, um, we carved our names in the theater. They're still there. Uh, yeah, we did a bunch of sort of like, Leah's very ritualistic. So we did a lot of ritualistic things. And one of the things we did, it's actually really sweet is we, Pricked our fingers. You sacrifice a virgin? What happened? <laughs> What's going on? We all pricked our we pricked our fingers and put our blood stained uh, fingerprints on a piece of paper with our names on them that we had framed, and we sent it to Christine Jones, who was the the set designer, and she put that framed picture of our blood stained fingerprints on the set of the tour of Spring Awakening. Wow. So you guys could put it on your resume? Yeah, it's the wow. first thing on my resume. <laughs> I was in it. I was in it. I mean, I was literally in it. Okay, we're going to move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> invite us. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to go there. Lily Cooper, I manipulated you into singing something. What did, what did you finally decide to haul out for us? We got to hear that fierce voice. Manipulated is probably the best word that you could use. Because I know. can't tell you. I don't know. Does anybody else feel like high, hyper anxiety about performing right now? Like, I am so stressed out. I texted Seth so many times being like, I don't know. Can I, should I, say, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Here's the deal. It's like people are donating and it's like people love people tune into the show to relax themselves and to distract themselves from what's going on. So just like hearing you do music is going to put people in a good mood. So that's sort of the way to think about it, that you're doing a service. Plus, I okay, need to hear some high belting and vibrato. High belting and vibrato. Okay, um, I'm going to relieve myself so your friends will watch you. My, I'm the only one wearing earphones. My, ear, my earbuds are like going in and out. And I feel like that dumb person that's like, is my sound working? I can't tell if it is. So am I good? It's good. I can I'm hear you. Sing, I'm gonna sing. Uh, and he's, Seth suggested a um, my go-to audition song, and so I'm gonna sing my go-to audition song, which I should give a shout out to Leah because she actually introduced this song to me as a great audition song. Uh, she probably doesn't have to audition for anything anymore, so she doesn't have to be mad at me for using it. <laughs> um, and it's very, I think, apropos for being in quarantine. I'm playing a karaoke track on YouTube. I hear the ticking of clock. I'm lying here, the room's pitch dark. I wonder where you are tonight. No answer on the telephone. And the night goes by so very slow. Oh, I hope that it won't end though. Alone. Till now, I always got my own. On it until I met you. And now it chills me to the bone. How do I get you alone? How do I get you alone? You don't know how long I have wanted to touch your lips and hold you tight. <clears throat> You don't know how long I have waited, and I was going to tell you tonight. But the secret is still my own, and my love for you is still unknown, alone. 
instrumental break. Instrumental break. Okay. My shoe at you. Okay. For someone shy, that was the most amazing. I don't know what to sing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was amazing. That upper third. <laughs> yeah. F star. If anyone's wondering uh, why Lily hasn't gotten on Broadway since we uh, did Spring Awakening, that's because that's, that's our audition. So. <laughs> okay. So, kids, I did some research. What I sort of like doing for people is. Um, saying that you did something eight times a week, but do you still remember it? So, John Gallagher Jr. Uh -oh. Does this uh -oh. sound familiar to you? <laughs> That's what printed. Oh, thank you, honey. Hi, Grom. Oh. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Corbett. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, here's the monologue. Let's see what you remember. Okay. This yeah. from Rabbit Hole. Dear Mr. and, uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Corbett, uh, something about um, somebody that I've been talking to told me it would be a good idea to reach out to you and say what's on my mind, something okay, to that effect. For, a lot of I, paraphrasing. No, I didn't ask for a summation of the monologue. An audience <laughs> paid for, I asked you for the lines you did eight times a week. I wanted to send you my condolences. That sounds more like it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gallagher, you're out. Oh no, I hope David Lindsay Bear isn't watching this. Sorry, um, Gideon Glick. Now you were Seymour eight times a week. Uh-huh. However, that means you should have memorized some other people's songs too. I'm his December bride. Take it. He's father. He knows best. I look like, I cook like Betty Crocker. Our, okay, Gideon, nope, you're out. <laughs> that was from Little Shop. I'm proud of you. Skylar. Yes. You starred in this. Did I? How to apply for a job. How to advance from the mail room. How to. Sit down at a desk. How to dictate memorandums. Is it that one? My picture's off. apologize at an audition. I want you to focus and go. Okay. <laughs> By the way, it's not an audition. But actually, yeah. Skylar, excellent so far. Thank you. Lily, don't worry. All I need you to do, Lily, you did the Australian tour of um, Wicked, didn't you? I also did it on Broadway, but whatever. <laughs> Jonathan, settle down, because yours is going to be hard. <laughs> my point is this. Oh, my God. I, I know you know the songs from, uh, from Wicked, but now I need to hear them with an actual clear and proper Australian accent. Done. <laughs> Did that really just happen? <laughs> Is it talent that could help me make 
the wizard. <laughs> if I might good. <laughs> By the way, Angela Lansbury was so Sorry. good. In the that was great. I was little. <laughs> Lily, I love that you had the accent and you actually had the staging, which is this. <laughs> okay. So I need to, this is this is a little bit more personal. So unfortunately, um, I need to focus with Jonathan for just a moment. So I'm going to just say goodbye to you other people for just a little couple of minutes. So uh, you're all going to be back at some point. Don't worry. Scott, you'll be back. Lily, dear, you're going to be back. <clears throat> Gideon, dear, you're going to be back. Okay, so, Jonathan, apparently you're a big fan of a certain two-time Tony Award winner. We mm -hmm. get it. Mm -hmm. Foster. So, do you remember when I gave you the Sutton Foster quiz on Sirius XM Radio? I do. Okay, so, remember every no, time... What did you say? I just got nervous. Oh, don't worry about it, dear. Yeah. But anyway, every time you were right, I had I recorded Sutton's voice being like, you are correct. You are yeah, wrong. You are correct. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, I had the same thing. I had the recording right here. So every time you're right, I'm going to click this. Every time you're wrong, well, this is, well, it's not quite a recording. Here we go. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there it is. Hi. I really dressed up for you. <gasps> Hi. Oh, I can't get the computer up. Um, hi, guys. How's it going? Oh, thank you for your birthday message, Sutton. Oh, my God. So thank sweet. How's it okay, going? We're, here. we're not here for that. Oh. All right, here we go. <clears throat> you look Sutton great. quiz. Jonathan, what was the name of the children's theater Sutton performed in? Uh, the Augusta Players. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them. I yeah, that, wasn't, right. that wasn't what I was referring to. There's Isn't another, that what you were Annie? There's another one that's like a sandwich. Yeah. <gasps> Peanut butter oh. players? Yes, you are yes. correct. Wait a minute. What's with the pool shark? I don't get it. Peanut butter players. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's because I can oh. see the inside of Sutton's mind sometimes. What was the name of the play where Sutton played a dominatrix? Oh my God. You have. One word, it's one word. Wait, don't tell me. It was at second stage. Mm -hmm. It was Ari Grainer. It's a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. And, hmm. oh, is it start with an S? No, look, look at her miming. Oh, it starts with a T? But it's one word? Yeah. What's the second letter? I will allow a second letter. No, 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 I don't, wanna, don't tell me the second letter. Okay, hold on. I gotta do this recall. I was, in, I was in London and so I didn't see it. It was like the one thing I haven't seen. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to bring you back. <laughs> uh, 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 true. Yes, yes. Oh my God, my <laughs> word. Wait. Trust. Hey, you are correct. <laughs> what were the two roles Sutton Foster played in Annie? The oh. two roles I played in Annie. So easy. Well, she was Annie when she was a kid. Is that what you're asking? Okay, and then, and then the star to be, which if you haven't, those of you watching at home, if you have not YouTubed Sutton Foster, star to be, I'm, I wouldn't be lying if I said I watched it two weeks ago. It's terrifying, but you are correct. I also played the dog catcher, which I think is very important and not well known. I know, I, well, I was one of the dog catchers, yes. I had a very important cross. And you were like a maid. I feel like there's a, a maid, like, well. maid yeah. like clapping or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant the featured roles there. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Name the two national tours that Sutton Foster did. Sutton. 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 The two national tours that Sutton Foster did. Will Rogers Follies in Greece. Wow. Impressive. You know, right, but I did more than that. I did Les Mis too. And Les Mis. You know what, Sutton? I didn't ask for your lip. <laughs> Jonathan, weirdly, those are the two I was thinking of. That's so weird that we were like, I remember sudden, I remember you talking about, you know, having played Eponine on tour, and then you got offered Eponine, 
And then you got the understudy for Millie and you were like, I know this is crazy, but I'm taking the understudy for Millie. Yeah. I love that. And you did that because you wanted to be part of a new musical. You wanted to create a new show, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, I don't know. It was like a trust your gut situation. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of keep doing something new and like, I know, I don't know. I, everyone around me thought I was crazy, but it all worked out. <laughs> It worked out for you, dear. Yes, no. <laughs> and the final question, Jonathan, please, please sing Sutton Foster's solo in the Scarlet Pimpernel. Oh my God. I couldn't even do that. Oh, I could. I could probably do it. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to have to cut to Sutton. I don't know it. There's something, it's the one in Madame Guillotine? It's in the Scarlet Pimpernel, and you're oh. singing about what your sister says. Oh, no, I don't remember that. I know, I oh, sort of remember the one in Madame Guillotine. I know I sing something, be clear, pretty dear, in a year you will be pretty dust. That's all I remember in um, Madame Guillotine. What do I sing in Scarlet Pepper now? I forgot. This, oh, yeah. a really big hat, it was like a penis. It was like a tie, really tall hat. This is a G-rated show. Okay. Here's the song. Me sister says his breath is sweeter than an Irish rose. I'm sure I'd fall in love if he would cross my path. Tony Award. <laughs> Dude. Wait, she's still fro hold on. Her everything went out. She's frozen. <laughs> That's no. Was I in a horrible position? Wait, that was you though, right? Am I correct? That was me. Yeah. You know it's a bad bad time. Me sister thinks his breath is sweeter than an Irish rose. I'm sure we'd fall in love if you would cross my path. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Ward. All right. In conclusion, oh, you know what's sudden? I'm going to text you the second batch of donations. Is your phone there? And you can oh, read. I'd like you to read the nice people that have been donating tonight. Hold on. So everyone can hear all the nice people that have donated. Um, read them out loud if you would. Well, there you are. Okay. All right. all right. Cynthia from California donated $200. Oh my God. Ruby from New York, $100. Jeffrey from Massachusetts, $50. Anthony from New York, $100. Tamar from New York, $50. Kimberly from Indiana, $75. Thomas from California, $100. Lacey from California, $50. Liz from Maryland, $100. Kate from Minnesota, $100. And Melanie from Michigan, $100. That's awesome. So I'm going to bring Sutton. Sutton, I want to do a whole reunion of your younger show. So I'd like that to happen, please. Okay. And um, just by the way, Jonathan, I brought her in pretty early. And I texted her. I said, I'm sorry you're waiting so long. And she said, I'm loving watching. So just, Aww. you know. I know. Tell, and tell everybody I said hi. I was, I'm, I, you know, Spring Awakening is one of my fa favorite favorite shows of all time. And uh so I um, it was really nice to see all you guys. And oh, Sutton. I I said hey. I remember when you came off Broadway. Sutton also sent us bagels to the theater every Saturday during preview. I did. I, did. So nice. I was such a fan of the show, and I had like a tiny, small investment in the show too because I loved it so much. I was like, um, I was, I, I saw it off Broadway and like lost my mind, and I ran up to Tom Hulse and I was like, can I? Is, can I be a part of this in some way? And he said, yes. So, and then I sent everybody bagels. He was like, hi, Skylar. Hi, John. Oh, hi. Hi, Gideon. Oh, uh, well, Lily's actually frozen. All right. Well, Lily's frozen. All right. So, Sutala, you're going to come back with Younger. I okay. love how casual you are. How casual? I Well, I've been no, in for four weeks. The arm position. Um, oh. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the carbonate of Grease. All right. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Bye, Bye buddy. Adorable. Um, Lily is still frozen, unfortunately, but she's frozen as her headshot. Look. Oh, you can't even see it. She's really frozen like this. Her headshot. Oh, no. oh yeah. live. <laughs> Hi, Lils. All right, so guys, I had the best time. Um, oh, by the way, everyone's giving you the answer, Jonathan. It, it's trust, but too little too late. Thank you, guys. I got there kind of in the end with a little help. Um, all right, so we got to just close with a final song. John Gallagher, your kidnappers gave you at least one guitar, right? <laughs> yes. So a glass of water and a guitar. So glass of water and guitar is all I'm allowed. 
I would love that. And then uh, we'll peace out. Guys, you are allowed to keep donating. Starsinthehouse.com. Don't forget, and we're also getting that matching donation tonight. I want to just give her a shout out one more time because we don't, we very rarely get matching donations. It's very kind. It is um, synth, uh, it's Catherine Hicks. She owns a Focus Design Studio. So thank you for that. All right, John Gallagher, I can't wait. And are you going to do a, are you going to do a loan by heart? Because that's really rude. All right, here I we go. <laughs> no, I'm going to sing a song by uh, my favorite songwriter, probably in the world. Uh, passed away a couple of days ago. Uh, his name is John Prine. He was 73 and uh, a cancer survivor. And he caught COVID-19 and sadly succumbed to it. And uh, he wrote some of the best songs I think ever written. He never wrote a musical. He didn't have to because every song he wrote was a mini musical, including this one, which I think is probably one of his best. It's called Angel from Montgomery. <laughs> Named after my mother My old man was another Child's grown old But if dreams were lightning Thunder desire This old house would have burnt down A long time ago Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery Make me a poster of an old rodeo Just give me one thing that I can hold on to To believe in this living is just a hard way to go and when I was a young girl, I had me a cowboy. Weren't much to look at, just a free rambling man. Oh, but that was a long time. And no matter how I try, the years that just go by like a broken down dam. Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. Make me a poster of an old rodeo. Just give me one thing that I can hold on to. To believe in this living is just a hard way to go. Well, there's flies in the kitchen. I can hear them, they're buzzing. And I ain't done nothing since I woke up today. How the hell can a person go to work in the morning, come home in the evening, and have nothing to say? Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. Make me a poster of an old rodeo. Just give me one thing that I can hold on to. To believe in this living is just a hard way to go. To believe in this living is just hard way to go. The great yeah. joke, Brian. So yeah. pretty. Pretty song. Um, John, my favorite is um the devastating um but old folks just grow alone oh, oh, hello in there killer oh, hello in there yeah oh it's just i can't I, it's I, you can barely listen to that song it's yeah. just uh, brandy right. carnell just did a tribute with that song yeah, yeah she was cool. really she was really close with him they were buddies I, I never got to meet him but um i saw him a lot when i was a kid my dad my dad saw him in the early days when he was just Go, getting out there on the road as a songwriter. He was my dad's hero. So my dad played all those records for me when I was a kid. 
It's so beautiful. And by the way, that song, Hello in There, it's about old people being alone. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I brought Sutton. It's so important, everybody watching, all of you guys, that we really reach out. Dr. John LaPook says three people a day you've got to reach out to. Even if yeah. you, you don't need it, then other people might need it. Really make the effort because we're all so isolated right now. And that's why people are also liking this show because they get to see people come together. So try to make a call. Lily, I love that you have your dog out. We, we do that at the very end oh. of the show. I, my dog is so first I'm gonna I'm gonna do the closing credits and I'll come say goodbye. So hold on. Jack Platnick made me closing credits. I've got a I gotta show the hell are they? Oh, there they are. <laughs> Once so I meet the wizard, <laughs> it's, my, it's Australian. <laughs> like, when I meet the wizard. <laughs> Did that really just happen? I don't even know how to do Australian. Shrimp on the bobby. Anybody? Um, all right, I should have come this. But I'll play some lists. <laughs> okay. Um, you guys, thank you. That was so much fun. Um, and I guess see you guys somewhere when we are allowed to see each other again. That would be nice. Yeah. I want to remind viewers tomorrow, 2 p.m., where we do plays. And John Gallagher, you know, I'm going to talk about doing a play. Wednesday matinees at 2, Saturday matinees at 2. Tomorrow is Fuddy Mirrors with the whole original cast. And that's ah! I know, isn't that cool? Whole original cast. And um, tomorrow night is, of course, Kristen Chenoweth. She's our regular Saturday host. So tune in, starsnouse.com. Keep donating. Thank you, everybody. Lily, that F sharp was amazing. Peace ah! out. And broadcast and broadcast. Sorry, sorry. Yes. I do. Oh, too late. <laughs>